All right. Looks like we are live. All right. I've only done this once before, so this will be fun. I'm going to figure out how to make sure it's working. And then I got to go ahead and get the link for it so I can share it on Facebook. Let's see. So go to the channel, go to live. All right. There it is. Live now. Nice. Looks like zero views currently, as is tradition. Well, as you'd expect. I've only been on for a moment. Am I even? Yeah, I am unmuted. That's good. Uh, get shareable link. That's what we need. Link copied to. All right. I am live on YouTube. Unboxing the new D&D. Uh, &D cartoon action figures the new 1980s D&D cartoon action figures from Target okay this is wait oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. this is good deal all right got a live stream Post. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and share that post just on my own wall as well. What's on my mind? Well, you know. Let's go back. Get that shareable link again since I accidentally copied over it. Link copied, good deal, paste. And make this one. Yeah, we'll leave this one at friends, I think. No, I guess we'll make this one public. I mean, hell, I'm public on YouTube, so. Might as well make it public here, right? All right. Good stuff. Now let's get back to OBS here. Let's see if everything's working correctly. Kind of says it is. I got no chat. But does it show me? I should have like a stream doc here, I think. Stats. Ah, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. I think. No, this is just like stream stats. I want to see. Who, if anyone, is watching the stream in OBS? I'm quite sure I can do that. I just don't remember how. Um, hmm. All right, well, we'll figure it out as we go. All right, well, I guess the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and actually open up the stream here and make sure it looks like it's working. Let's just open it in the other browser. All right, good stuff. Got no... Hmm. Should be able to hear myself on here. Looks like audio is in. Microphone's working. Should have audio output to my headset right now. Check, check, one, two. Okay, one sub, one viewer, which is me. Hmm. But why don't I hear myself? I really kind of feel like I should, but okay. I'll tell you what. Pull this up on a different device. That's going to be the way to go. So now that I've got that as my last played thing for my personal account, close that out there. Go to YouTube on the phone. Okay. Pull up the stream. And listen for audio. 
close that out there. Excellent. All right, cool. We have audio. That's what I really wanted to find out. Was not going to get very far into this stream without audio, hopefully. So now let's get to letting other people know. Anyone who likes the old 80s D&D &D cartoon. I'm about to unbox the new Target figure set on YouTube. There we go. All right, let's put that in a couple more chats and then we'll call this good. All right, what other, what other chats do we need here? <laughs> my friend says wait it's worth more in the box wash your hands well I mean that's that's all good advice all good advice <laughs> all right let's see anybody else we want to let know here that's the top groups hmm all right yeah <laughs> all right okay let's get these sad conversations out of the way we've shared this in the relevant groups um we'll see if it picks up any views let's go ahead and close out all this shit on facebook and Let's see, the only thing, okay, so now I really want to figure out if anybody's actually watching this in OBS. I'm quite sure I should be able to see that. So studio mode, that's not what I need. What do I need? It's like one of these docks, I think. Hmm. Oh, I thought so. But no, I mean, chat's the only real relevant one on here. Let's see, a deck link output, no, no, this is what I need. Okay, Google save me. How do I see my current viewer count in OBS? No, I am not watching a video to find this out. How to set up, there's a widget? No, in the activity feed part of my screen, okay. Is that actually a thing? Activity feed part of my screen? Oh, come on. Stats? Well, we have stats again. Same ones as before. No view count. All right, we're going really low tech for right now. And we're just going to see on the phone. Okay, I have one viewer, and it's me. I can live with that. Why am I not hearing myself anymore? Volume is still up. Oh, it's paused. Go to YouTube on the phone. There we go. And we're just going to see on the phone. Okay. Oh, wow. This has lagged considerably. Looks like it's pretty interesting. Uh, okay, so I've got one current viewer, and it's me. I'm going to go ahead and wait for a little bit more than that. And let's see in the meantime if I can figure out how to get the freaking view on here that I actually want. So it's none of this stuff. What? Oh man, I swear this was just shown by default last time. But again, I have only done this once. So the odds that I actually, I think, yeah, I did this once and it was, I did a very brief YouTube stream, but really I've only streamed on Twitch. And I think that GUI is what popped up a view count that was very easy for me to see. So I guess this is different somehow. So what is studio mode? Studio mode, oh, preview to program. Interesting, okay, no, no studio mode. Uh, no virtual camera, settings. Let's see, stream. Um, well, no, that gives me nothing. How about it, advanced? That does, doesn't really seem like this should be advanced. Open stats dialog on startup. 
Okay. Okay, cool. Um, dum, dum, dum. Automatically record, of course. What are we doing here? Snapping sources. Doesn't seem all that relevant. Okay, it seems absolutely freaking wild that this would not have like a really simple, highly accessible option to show me the view count on my stream. That seems extremely strange. Kind of don't believe it could possibly be the case. Okay, well, let's get out of here with that. And we'll keep this going here. All right, so it's not really a surprise that I would have zero viewers here right now because I have like one subscriber, I think, on this YouTube channel. So that's not really surprising. I wonder if I can get any more traction anywhere. Let's see. I mean, it's pretty fucking niche opening to this is possibly better done on whatnot. If I were selling them, I guess that's where I would go. Maybe I could. Who knows? <coughs> Pardon me. All right, so full screen interface. No stats. Yes. All right, quit pausing or so. <laughs> All right, that is lag to hell, but it's cool. As long as I leave that video playing there, I think it'll stop putting itself to sleep and I can see my view count, which again is one. Advanced audio properties, not what we're looking for. Um, all right, OBS 27.2.4. Where do I see my view count? For, okay, how do I see current viewer count in OBS YouTube stream? Stream, stream, stream. Okay, stream live. Okay, Twitch Studio. So I need, <clears throat> that's a 2017 thread. Okay, come on. <coughs> All right, here's one from this year at least. Hmm. Huh, okay. All right, so. Here's eight months ago a thread saying it's a feature, not a bug, and you never want to know live what your viewer count is. Well, that's, I guess, if you have the extremely high quality problem of wondering if it's gone from like 100 to 150 or 100,000 to 150,000. But I just kind of want to know if I'm doing this for anyone. But, you know, it's cool. I'm not that concerned about it either way. I am going to have a little coughing fit here, so let's mute. All right, well, shorter than expected. <laughs> That's what she said. So, let's see. I think maybe like a beverage. A beverage. Let's just uh, give this whole thing a second. You might get to see Princess Kira here. She may choose to join you. I'll be back in just a moment. And I'll watch myself on stream here. And let's mute the headset.
Hey. Well, would you look at that? Mistress Kira did make an appearance. And let's see. All right, princess. You just be a good girl. Got a couple of beverages there. Got my trusty view counter. Okay. And got this Kira. Come on. Here, Kira. Let's get out of here. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. All right. I mean, you can come back up here in a minute, Kira, but you're going to be in the way when I get, get going with the knife here. All right. So I think we're going to go ahead and get started and crack this box open. So I'm a huge fan of the 80s D&D cartoon. Oh, man, I do have my charger down here for the phone. Okay, I'm going to move this over. All right, good deal. Oh, yeah, the other thing I think we need to do is make sure that the microphone didn't switch to the headset like I kind of feel like it might have. Nope, sweet. All right, cool. So now, okay, now that I'm doing that, I want to kind of check. How did I get there before? It was your videos. Yeah, I wonder, okay, yeah, because I fixed the output. Because it basically just wasn't, oh, that's right. I'm going to go there in a different window. Yeah, the audio output wasn't working on here before, so no wonder I couldn't hear myself when I went. Okay. Let's delete all that. There's the URL. I should be able to hear myself. And I can. Excellent. Good deal. Sweet. So that's out of there. We're out of the browser. We're out of the sound control panel. We're looking at a box cutter. Hey, what's up, Maddie? Maddie Shoe. I am glad you've joined me, sir. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> well, looks like I might have missed you, but maybe you'll come back. Thank you very much, Maddie. Um, if I had little bells and whistles on my channel set up right now, I would definitely set them off for you. Um, there is some pretty considerable lag, so should you come back, Maddie? Um, you know, just know I love you very much. <laughs> All right. Woohoo! Let's get going on this box. So I'm a big fan of the 1980s D&D cartoon. Um, I wasn't a fan of it in the 80s. I missed it. It was before my time. So I guess if I'm going to tell a story about it, that story is going to be that I didn't know this show existed until I was in my 30s. Um... And that was quite a while ago. Oh, you're upset at the lack of pageantry. I don't know why I can't see that you're in here. Does It shows me one viewer and it's me. I apologize for the lack of pageantry, though. It is definitely the weak spot of the channel at the moment. But it's something we can work on. But let's get right into this because I really want to see these figurines. So I can tell you right off the bat, they have weak-ass packaging. Um, I've got two sets in here. One of them stay in box for now. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I'm either going to gift it or, you know, save it, I guess. But we'll go ahead and crack one set because they didn't put any windows in the packaging. So let's put the packing slip out of there. Uh, but you can't see the figures through the packaging. So you've got to unbox these if you actually want to see what they've sent you. So we've got two sets in here pretty poorly crammed in the box. Right off the bat, very disappointed in Target's poor treatment of this so like I got two Hanks here and they're both kind of bent one of them way worse than the other so that's the one that we will open so this is Hank he's the the leader of the party um let's see I gotta, oh, got that here. sorry this is Hank the ranger he's the leader of the party in the cartoon and he's kind of like the lead dude in a lot of episodes but not I mean I guess he like leads the party by default but he's not a terribly interesting character most of the time. He has one episode where he has a lot of um, character development, I guess. All right, so continuing the tradition of giving me one damaged and one not. Uh, Diana, the acrobat. 
Uh, there's going to be one that's dinged up here at the top, so that's the one that we will open. Um, each of these comes with a, a die, which is pretty cool, and they're all different, except I think like this, yeah, this one comes with the D20, and so does the big one we'll get to at the bottom here. Um, but I think between all of them, you maybe get most of a full set, so, oh man, this one's really banged up. That's the one we will open there. This one down here. Oh, this one's got tape on it. Okay, they all have tape on it. Just a little bit. All right, we've got Bobby. He's the kid. Bobby's the barbarian. And he comes with Uni, uh, his trusted companion, the unicorn. Uh, once again, we got one bent and one really not. So, and of course, the rest of this box is in better shape than this one, but... Oh man, this one's actually quite beat. Okay, we're going to keep the... Man, this one's got a big crease in it too. <sighs> you suck, Target. Um, Alright, which of these am I going to open? I'm going to open this one. It looks like it's coming open at the seams anyway. And let's get to the big baddie of the group here. So this is actually the good guy and the bad guy. Man, this is way bigger than I thought it was going to be. This thing is actually pretty hefty. Let's get this box out of here. Um... Sweet. So, this is Dungeon Master and Avenger. So, Avenger, the force of evil. And Dungeon Master, obviously representing the DM in the game, but also kind of like the, uh, the guy who gives quests in the show. So, okay, this one's in slightly better shape, despite a little ding in the front. This one's got a crushed corner. Really, really not impressed by the fact that they just tossed all these in a box with no padding. And I'm probably going to bitch them about it because these weren't cheap. But anyway, we're going to open this set here. We're going to set these aside. So let's get these out of here. In case you're wondering, I had to put those where the cats can't get them. So, now, without that giant box in the way, we can actually do some kind of standard streaming here. So, our standard box opening, I guess I can say. So, we got four boxes that we're going to open. We've got Avenger and Dungeon Master, Diana, Hank, and Bobby. So... I'm pretty psyched about these. Um, the the ads for them when they first came out definitely made these look very nice. They've got, in addition to the dice, you know, they've got kind of some different, um, you know, different hands, different faces, and they all have their weapons. Like Bobby comes with Uni. Um, I think that that's all pretty exciting stuff. So let's see what I can do to open this and keep everything in one piece. Let's get the box cutter. Cut this tape. And we are starting with Hank, because I think it's only appropriate to start with the leader of the group. Okay. Alright, so, that's the crap packaging. You can't see your figurine through, and when you open it, this is what you get. Um, let's make sure this is going to show up well. I am really shocked at how loud the stream is here. It's like, I don't know, a full minute behind maybe? Looking at it on my phone, so... Could be better. Okay. They've got him wrapped up and taped in a bag here. This is not... Not the best packaging, I would say. Um, I'm gonna... I really don't want to, like, deform the figure. By trying to yank all this out, so I'll gently cut that tape, open them up, and get the tape narrowing the bag there, so let's tear it. Alright, this is Hank, and he does look pretty good. Looks just like he does on the package. He's fully articulable. Ooh, he's, he's got quite a bit of swing in him. Oh yeah, that was out of view. Now that I actually look over at my OBS, is that okay? There he is, fully on camera, 
and that's him uh, shaking his thing. There you go. Apparently what he likes to do based on this design. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, let's get this cut. This is, of course, his famous energy bow. Notice that none of the weapons on the show ever function as weapons. Like, he shoots arrows out of this, and they usually become lassos or, like, hypnotic patterns or something other than an arrow. Hmm, pardon me. Okay. Let's get this to actually cut. Oh, come on, man. Okay, you know what? We're going to go in from the side. I'm not even going to worry about cutting that top. So he comes with two bows. That's right. Okay, so he comes with just the plain bow. And because the bow didn't have arrows, he never actually has a physical arrow with the bow at all. So can he hold the bow in this? Oh, okay. This is the bow. The bow holding hand, I guess. I'm not sure. Thought we might have. Okay, so there's no other hand in the in the package here. Let's see what he says he comes with. Yeah, it just comes with two bows and the die. Okay, so it looks like they intend for him to be able to hold the energy bow here. And I gotta say, that's gonna be pretty tough. I mean, you could do it, but I'm a little worried I'm gonna break his little thumb off here. But let's see if we can get I mean, honestly, if I can't get Bobby holding the energy bow, I'm not sure why I opened this. That's, I'm sorry, Bobby Hank. If I can't get Hank holding the energy bow, then this entire thing was a sham. Okay, there we go. Thankfully, not a sham. He is able to do it. And we can recreate. Hang on. Is this upside down? I think it's it's got to be upside down, right? Okay, on the package... Okay, it's not... Oh, it is upside down. Okay, they want... <laughs> Alright, hold on to your thumb, bro. They want him to hold this down. This doesn't really look like an appropriate way... Oh, okay, I guess it is. I guess this is sort of an appropriate way to hold the bow. Alright, we're going to get this on... Oh, please don't break off thumb. I feel like this is so fragile. I'm not sure how fragile it really is, but it's kind of freaking me out. Okay, cool. So he's going to have that down, and now we can have this hand turned over, and right there. It's not really quite looking as good as on the box. This hand coming over. All right. Oh, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Looks a little... Ah, there we go. That is all... Oh, come on, man. His elbow does not bend the way shown on the package. Not quite. Very nearly, but not quite. Which means this whole thing doesn't work as shown. It's kind of wonky. Okay, let's do it like this. There we go. That is as good as we're going to get with Hank the Ranger holding his energy bow. And let's go ahead and get oops, Hank's extra packaging. Now, that's an interesting question. Are these guys going to stand? on their own. Let's get him back over here. Okay, cool. Okay, he's got his bow and a D8. So Hank comes with a D8, which I thought was interesting. I thought he would have come with a D20 since he's like the leader. A D8 is like a pretty niche die. All things considered, you don't use it very often, so... Anyway, I don't know. We're gonna open up Diana next. Diana has a good episode. It's the Children of the Stargazer. Um, that's kind of the episode that's all about her. She has a love interest. We get to find out more about her life outside of the realm, her life before uh, she went on the ride that brought all the kids to the, the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. And <laughs> Oh, hey, you're right, Maddie. Longbows do use a D8. But that logic does not carry through to the rest of these, I'm pretty sure. So, I mean, like, Diana comes with a D20. Oh, okay. She's an acrobat. Acrobatics checks. Oh, wait, hang on. Is it a D12? It's a D12. 
No, okay, it shows a D20 on the box. Oh, this is a D20. It's just a very small D20. Interesting. All right, let's let's rip her open here. All right, so she has two versions of her bow staff, which is cool. She's got the static one and the one when she's spinning it. And then we'll open her up here. And here is her D20. So this tiny D20 is honestly not that impressive. I was kind of hoping it would be like a full size D20, but not a big deal. All right, let's get her open in one piece though. That is a big deal. I'm not fucking around with the top at all this time. We're just gonna, oh, they're gonna make me. Oh man, whoever packaged this just really didn't like the people who were gonna have to open it. Okay, gotta rip as much of it as possible to get her head out in one piece. Oh, she looks great. Time for a little soda. And let's see. So we got Diana. And I will say, Hank looks more like Hank than Diana looks like Diana in the details, but she's still pretty good. I mean, it's always hard when they're trying to nail down these like kind of amorphous, low-budget animation characters into like one specific look. It's really hard to get the face right. Um, and that... That's true across all of these figures. So overall, they did a really, really good job. Um, I threw the package down. Before taking a look at how they've posed her. So they posed her with her hand on her hip and the not spinning bow staff. So there it is. The one that tries to roll away on you, that's a pretty good reason to pose her with that one. So this one really does look exactly like the one in the show whenever she's spinning it, but this is, I think, it's definitely the easier one to pose with. Let's see if the hand-on-hip pose is actually achievable with the figurine. That is the tough part. I suspect not. It does not seem to want to bend in that direction at all. There's a joint there, but I mean, I need a WD-40 it or something? What's going on here? It's got like no bend to it. So maybe I can do it the other way? No. Yeah, this one doesn't really want to bend either. I'm pretty afraid I'm going to break this arm off. It does not appear to be rotating the way it should. Yeah, there's like a little thing that's supposed to turn like a hinge. It's supposed to move here, and it is not. It's just threatening to break. So that's a bummer. Um, all right, maybe we can pose her anyway. Kind of, sort of. Like, her wrist moves. <laughs> okay, this is... She doesn't have two staves, so I can't... Or two staves. Staff number one's all you get. Okay, well, that's the best we're going to get with Diana. She's going to join Hank over here and hopefully not knock him over. Oh, Hank's out of frame. Hank, get over here. Diana, back him up. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> I said don't knock him over, Diana. There we go. Maybe she can hang out barely in frame. Let's get you both moved over. Now you can sort of prop each other up instead of knocking each other down. There you go. All right. I'm not sure that's the best bow handling practice on Hank's part, but she could probably take it. So, all right. Now we're going to go for the kid of the group. So they really screwed, like, Sheila and Eric. We don't get the Cavalier or the Thief in this set. And I kind of get not giving us the Thief because they probably didn't want to put Thief on this kid's product. Um, I mean, it's all fun and games having a Thief in the actual game of D&D. &D. How many parents sit down and play the game and read the books and know that? Um, but they would maybe have more people yelling about it if they tried to put that on the shelf in Target. So, okay, Bobby... Is Sheila's little brother, so kind of weird that we just get him, but at least they did give us Uni with him. He's always with Uni, and he has his trusty club and his barbarian helmet, his horn helmet. Um, this one looks really good. Looks really, really close to the cartoon. Hopefully I can get these... Okay, good. I can get these helmet horns out in one piece. All right, Bobby. Looking good, man. 
Let's get Uni out, and Uni is packaged with the club. So Uni is just an accessory and gets shoved in here with everything else. That's kind of a little disrespectful, but I mean, it's kind of how the show treats Uni too, so I guess I'm here for it. Um, Bobby's gonna... Okay, so Hank, Hank's arms were all loosey-goosey. Not so much Diana. And now Bobby's arms, how the hell are these supposed to even bend? Like, okay, he can go like that, and then... Does that... I swear this arm is not rotating on the hinge. It's just bending the hinge, and it's going to snap off. Man, that's a real bummer. These are... These are really supposed to be well articulated. I mean, not like super well, but well enough to at least pose them as shown in the packaging. So let's see if I can use the narrow end of the club to break this loose, this hinge that's stuck inside. Now I'm just going to mess the club up. Great. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. Let's just try to make Bobby hold the club. <laughs> Can't hold it. Anything like, oh man, okay. I did not realize that whole thing was entirely out of frame. I gotta get better at this. Sorry if you're watching. If you're just joining, we are unboxing the um, Dungeons and Dragons cartoon action figure set from Target. So far, the quality on the figures is very inconsistent, um, though the quality on the models is quite high. I'm very happy with the designs, but yeah, so this hand now also doesn't actually hold the club. Now in the picture, they don't really show it holding the club. It's just kind of like, it's more, it's it's not so much that it's holding the club, it's more just that it's helping the club to stay propped up. So yeah, okay, I don't think that's designed. Oh man, I don't think it's designed to do what it's showing on the box at all. And then this wrist just kind of looks broken like okay it does rotate at least that's good ever so slightly okay so bobby can kind of do what he's doing on the package but not really because the proportions are, ah there we go cool the proportions aren't wrong just got to kind of wiggle things around so we get a d12 which the club must do a freaking d12 by the logic that you spelled out earlier matt and i think you're probably right um it's like a great club is that a d12 and this is, this is the, okay, this is the pair. Let's get the club back in there. Okay. Without Sheila around, I'm sure Bobby's going to stick close to Hank, so. Let's get Uni in front of Bobby, just like that. All right, so I gotta say these figs are looking pretty good so far. Um, I'm really not into how poorly articulable they are, but they do look good. So I'm not gonna be playing with them very much. So getting them set up on the shelf is all I really care about, since I can't display them in the box. Um, and this box is determined to self-destruct when I open it also, so that's fun. This is the big one. This is the first one I saw and the one that made me sure I was going to buy the set, but then I was really happy with the quality I saw of all of them, so I'm kind of happy to have them all. But this is definitely the one. You know, if I wasn't able to get the others, I still would have gone way out of my way to get this one. Because this one is Mr. Big Bad himself. And I should be, like, building the suspense and opening... Dungeon Master first, but fuck a bunch of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're probably right, Matt. Alright, so... Fucking a bunch of that build-up and defer gratification shit. This is Venger. And Avenger has a little skirt liner. That's adorable. Um... Got to get get rid of the cardboard skirt inset below his robes here. Uh, Venger looks great. Oh, man. Everything I said earlier about it being really hard to nail the face, like, Venger basically doesn't have any defined facial features in the show, and yet they nailed him here. 
Oh my god, can I not bend Venger's arms? I'm gonna be really upset if I can't. Oh good, they work. Okay. So it's like only these bigger ones work. Like Hank's bigger than Diana quite a bit, and Bobby's very small too. So that's good, because I really would be upset if I couldn't lift up Venger's arms here, as shown on the package. Because this is the big bad right here. And he's mad. Always. That's Venger. There we go. So, um, let's get his wings. Oh, here's the M. You can tell. Oh, no, actually, that might be the wings. No, this has got to be the wings. The wings are huge. Okay, yeah, you can tell by the relative thickness that that's, that's DM right there. So we'll get, get Dungeon Master out here. And he comes with nothing, looks like. Yeah, that's true. I think he comes with nothing. Yeah, so this one comes with a D10 and a D20. So, Matt, what is the uh, the D10 representing. Avenger has like lots of different magic, so what type of spells? Look at those wings. I did not realize it was going to be a one piece wing set. Um, I, I, I like that because it means the angle will always be right between the wings. Oh my. Okay, so that one came with a little D20. Well, this one came with the great big granddaddy d20. Look at that thing. Rolls an 18 and a 7. So, a bit of a mixed bag. And this d10 is actually, like, uh, in 10s. So it's, uh, for a d100 set. Um, which, you know, I wish someone else came with the regular d10, but maybe Eric and Sheila will later. That'd be very cool. And I'd be surprised if we don't get a set with good, like, um, War Duke is the the big one everybody always wants, uh, but there's a few uh, characters from D and D lore that are prominent in the cartoon or have major appearances in episodes that I'd be surprised if we don't see at some point. Like uh, Wolf the Spider Queen looks very dated in her presentation, but I think that'd be a big nostalgia bomb for a lot of fans. Um, who else? There's there's quite a few. There's the Beholder and. Um, or I mean, there's a there is the beholder in the show, of course, just a beholder. Um, but there are oh, there's the demon dragon, um, Tiamat. Everybody's always waiting for a Tiamat. There we go, got the wings in. Just took a second to get them lined up right. Man, Venger looks awesome. Oh man, he looks better than all the rest combined. And he also comes with like magic blast hands. Oh, these are so cool. Um, but I did want to just leave him posed as on the package, just like everyone else for now. And it looks like with DM, Dungeon Master, you just don't really do very much in the way of posing. Let's see what Dungeon Master is doing on the package there. Yeah, he's just got his hands out, and this finger is pointing more up, like, or out, away in a way that the figure does not want to point. Great, so... Well, that's pretty funny. Okay, so you can point him like this, but then you cannot rotate this hand the way shown on the package. So that's as good as it gets right there. Okay, cool. Well, aside from a little bit of, you know, manufacturing, um, shortfalls in terms of the limbs not being articulable here you know I'm not sure I'm gonna probably do some reading online and see what other people who do more with action figures say about this I bet you can like I don't know heat it or something slightly and soften it and get it to work or maybe there's tools I can use to help me get them to bend um, without marring the plastic uh, or maybe I'm just stuck with them as is and that's not the worst thing ever they're not super super poseable um, but I think I can get them looking good in at least like one static pose and try to figure out something to do with them. At the end of the day, was it a good expenditure? Absolutely not. This was a total waste of money. Um, the sealed set might pay off someday if I don't just give them away. Um, but that's really, at the end of the day, I guess not really why I bought them. This was, I don't go for many pure nostalgia bombs, but this one was aimed squarely at me and it was really worthwhile.
No idea on the D10, Maddie. I feel you. I don't have a clue either. I mean, there's a bunch of D10 spells. I'm playing like a 8th level wizard in my current campaign. I should probably know more about what does a D10, but I really just RP the hell out of that character. I do almost no combat. Okay, hang on. Set Hank out of frame again. Let's get Hank set up there. We got Diana. And now Bobby and Uni. Okay, Bobby and Uni are going to go over here by DM for the purposes of framing. And there we go. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this set. I thought they were pretty cool. Um, but we're not done. I got a special surprise. So I really, really appreciate you hanging out, Maddie. Um, anybody else who has come to join, welcome. And if you're just joining, um, what you see before you is the Dungeons and Dragons action figure set uh, that Target is currently selling. Um, I pre-ordered these and they just came in today and I'm really psyched to open them up. And, you know, overall, um, I do kind of feel like I got what I paid for here. They could certainly be priced a little bit um, more friendly, but they're not terrible especially for something that is squarely aimed at people who have like actual jobs this is not something trying to be bought for kids um, though kids would probably enjoy these i don't think they will enjoy them anywhere near as much as someone like me who has some sort of nostalgia for the show and even more for people a little bit older than me who actually watched the show the first time around instead of coming to it um, later in life now i may have come to it later in life but i always knew this show was definitely just made for me all right, but we do have a special surprise today for sticking around um, for an extra double dip on a nostalgia bomb. I'm gonna crack this pack of heavy metal trading cards um, that I got earlier this week over at my local horror resale shop where they also grab all kinds of different retro stuff and throw it up on the shelf. So there's usually some random kind of cards or something available. Um, I'll tell you what, let's. I want you to be able to see what's in here as I open it. So let's get Venger out of the way. And I'm going to move Hank over there a little bit. Okay. So I don't have a clue what's in these. I never opened these when I was a kid. This is uh, copyright 1991. There's 90 cards in this set. Collect all 90 cards. Heavy Metal TM, copyright 91. HM Communications, Settle Brook, New Jersey. Uh, designed by McNabb Art Studio, 10 cards per pack, a 90 card collection from the covers of Fantasy's number one magazine. All right, so this should be excellent. Get covers from the iconic Heavy Metal magazine. Another thing that I do actually have some authentic nostalgia for, but it's all from seeing those iconic covers and um, wondering what lay beyond in the pages I could never really afford and um, unlike a lot of the crap that I, you know, did see in the store and kind of get to know a little better, um, there was never heavy metal around that I could just page through without buying. So this is something that I have a lot of, uh, fond memories of looking at, but never really experiencing. So I'm very excited to take a look back here. So we got 10 covers from heavy metal and there's our first one. And let's see, so who did these? These have artist credits or anything? Let's see what's on the back of this one. All right, sweet. So this is December 82, starstruck by Elaine Lee. Oh, that's a story, I guess, illustrated by Mikhail William Kaluta. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so this tells you everything that's in the episode, or, I mean, in the issue of the, the magazine that's on here. That's badass. Okay, so this is the December 82. Um, ooh, this one's got an exclusive interview with Francis Ford Coppola, and this is, let's see if you can still see if I'm reading off the back here, September 83, with The City That Didn't Exist by Pete Christen. Oh, so it does tell me at the bottom, the front cover here is by Enrique, Enrique. This front cover was by Monzo Algora. Okay. And then we got this bad boy here. This is the March 91, so this is the year this set was made. This cover is by Servent. And who do we got here? Oh, wow, that's cool. It's like a mech werewolf kind of thing. Interesting. All right, this 
This is pretty classic heavy metal looking. Get your scantily clad girl wizard. Oh, stay up right, Diana. There you go. This is the August 82. Uh, covers by Chris Achilios. All right. This one here, covered by Bob All, is the January 78. Got a very scantily clad warrior woman on a horse. That's about as heavy metal as it gets. If you've seen the heavy metal movie, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're going to get to even more directly from the heavy metal movie in just a moment here. All right, so this one here, this is uh, June 77. It's inter interesting, they got the price in the corner of these two. So in June 77, it was $1.50, but it was $2 by the 80s. And how much was the one in the 90s? Does it tell me? Uh, by the 90s, they'd stop putting the price on the cover. <laughs> so June 77, these all have like a little quote too from the heart shake it baby shake that thing in the extraterrestrial ballroom of the rock galaxy from rock blitz by sergio macedo interesting all right and we got like a spacefaring monkey spacefaring monkey for sure now this one looks straight out of heavy metal you've got uh a woman not wearing very much with her trusty dragon that looks just like um Oh man, the the Terrakian uh, from the end of Heavy Metal and her steed. That cover is by J.M. Baroy. It's called Alien 2. Oh no, no, actually, hang on. It doesn't tell me the cover on here. Well, that's weird. This is like the one that doesn't have a cover credit. Um, these are hard times. The jellyfish from outer space is attacking our colonies and our settlements from the jellyfish from space. All right, now we've got... Uh, this looks like Mad Max, sort of, maybe a little more urban. March 89, covered by Royo. Uh, let's see, we got Woman with a Gun, covered by Royo, September 90. And we're going to finish up with uh, Very Lucky Robocop, January 90, uh, covered by Ovi Hondru. Well, that was fun. I'll have to get my hands on one, of, one or two of these issues at some point and actually see what's in them because yeah i've really never done more than page through a couple of uh, issues of heavy metal but i've watched the movie a thousand times that's for sure very very fond memories of the the franchise all right that's all i had to open today um but this was fun i really appreciate it anybody who came along for the ride thank you very much for participating in the chat maddie and uh sticking around to see it through um all in all, I just now got to figure out where to put these before the cats get to them and got to figure out what dice to put with this incomplete set so I could actually play a game of D&D &D with this. I got two D20s. I got to pretend this one's a D10 so I can use it with this one and then I got a full set minus the D4. But maybe, uh, you know, once we get, I'm guessing it'll be like Eric, Sheila, Warduke, um, and Tiamat, and uh, maybe Dima Dragon. And then, you know, I'm sure they'll distribute the dice that we need amongst those and we'll be able to have the full set. But this one's actually pretty cool. The big D20. I might, might play with that. Hey, a 19. It's rolled pretty high for me, too. So this one's definitely going to go at least in my bag. Okay, it's got the D&D &D logo for the 20. It's pretty nice. I wonder if this one does, too. No, this one just says 20. So, yeah, this one's a big upgrade. Excellent. All right, well, a lot of fun today. Thanks for sticking around, folks. And uh, see you next time.